Hello everybody. In this video, I would like to show you some of the considerations that you might need to take when you are using LAN automation. In one of my previous videos, I discovered a couple of fabric edges with LAN automation, right? But something that I would like to add in this video is, okay, once I completed my process, right? What happened if I would like to add additional switches to my SDA fabric site? So what will be the considerations here? Because uh, when I was checking the process about this land automation, you can see here that I have my border control plane one and my border control plane two, right? So I say, okay, let me double check if I can just add like an additional link, right? That additional link or what we are going to use for this lab is discover this fabric edge phi. So basically we have 110 and 110 interface in both of the fabric border nodes, right? I say, okay, let me add a, just the link, right? And let's see what happened. So if you go through that process, what you will see is that, and let's just choose the the right port so this is 109 let me see here we say oh sorry 1010 right so it's 1010 so we said that is 1010 also and you can see here that basically if you follow this process and let me just push that configuration so you can see what is going on here? Let me go to status here and say 110. Okay, so if we log into this device, right? So let's see what's going on here. The place 1010 is the one that we said. You can see that Catalyst Center pushed the layer three configuration on these two interfaces, 1010, and also it will push the layer three configuration to this border node too, the same interface. Interface. Okay, it will take some time here, but at the end, what you will see is that Catalyst Center will push also a layer three configuration here. But that's not what you really want. The approach that you want is that this fabric edge is a new device, right? So there is no configuration here. So there is no point for me to configure this interface as a layer three when this device, the fabric edge five, doesn't have any configuration, right? So what I want is land automation to fully discover this device and configure all the interfaces needed for that communication, right? Because this is a new switch. We're gonna wait for this to be completed so I can show you what should be the process. And also I would like to point out that something that happened to me. So I was trying to discover this device, the Fabric Edge 5 before, and now the task got stuck in this discovery process and I cannot delete it. So my guess is that in this case, you might need to contact TAC and TAC with my engage BU to delete this specific process. Because when you start learn automation, you will see that the link between my border node that was previously in this case was I think one of five. Let's double check. I think we can start. Let's see. Let's do this. This is what I want to show you that you cannot use the same interface for discovery. You can see here that all these interfaces here use the LAN automated process for discovery of the devices. But the problem that I have at this time is that I couldn't complete the full process. And that's what I want to point out. I couldn't complete this process. So I just want to start over, but I cannot use the same interface 
because Catalyst Center detected that a specific interface was used previously for LAN automation. So that means I cannot reuse the same interface for this process. So let's wait first for the previous task to be completed, which is add the link, which I told you, I'm not quite sure what is the purpose of this add the link. I guess the purpose here is in case you want to configure this new Fabify manually, you, you can just add the link to these specific border nodes and you don't really need to configure anything else. But if it's a new device, adding the link won't really discover the new fiber gauge. So let's wait for this to be completed. We should see also here 410 with configuration, as you can see here, right? But this is a new switch. So basically the switch is asking for an IP address so the device can contact Catalyst Center and start the full process, right? So let's wait for this and I will show you that portion in a moment. Okay, guys, so we're going to start with the LAN automation process. So in this case, as I mentioned before, the add the link, it will just add layer three configuration to those specific links. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run LAN automation again like a new process. Let's see what happened because as I mentioned before, I use LAN automation for my border control plane node and a couple of fabric edges. So let's see what happened if you try again. I'm not able to see the devices here. Okay, let me exit this sync inventory here. So let's resync this device for this to be completed. Yeah. Okay, okay, now I can see these devices here. So let's go to Florida Homestead Office One. This is the border control plane one, and I'm going to use, let's see, what is the interface? 114, let's see, okay, this one. I'm going to save, and secondary, let's use the one, this border control plane two, Why? So we're good here, and then <clears throat> in this case, what I'm gonna use is the CSV file that you can upload to this process, right? If you move to relax, you can, let me delete this one because I was using this before, but you should be able to upload CSV file with all the devices, serial number, and IP address that you would like to use. So in this case, let me show you what I have. It's just one single device. This is the host name, the serial number, and the IP that I want to use. So let me close this save file. Upload this file. Okay, so let's you need to use the IP address pool that is dedicated for LAN automation. I'm gonna enable multicast and host mapping. I won't use any host mapping here because what I want is to use the host name that I defined in this CSV file. Let's see if that works. So LAN automation, the enable multicast and the file. Let's review this. The port is 1014, which is this one. Okay. Multicast and the CSV file. So let's start this process and let's see 
what happened. So first of all, I should see the DHCP information here in this device, right? And my fabric edge is trying to get an RP using VLAN 1. So let's see the details here. And as you can see here, something that, that is important here is that Catalyst Center detected that there is a RP and loopback already on those devices. So it will reuse existing IP address, which is good. So you can basically run again LAN automation without worry if it will push a different IP and that will affect all your site. So we can see that there is a warning here that I'm trying to use 45 for the for this specific serial number but it's not available for allocation, right? So that's the reason why I can see this warning here. So let's see what happens. Let's see if the device can use this IP address. So if I go to Fabric Edge 5, I can see that it received an IP.2, right? And now I need to wait for all the process to be completed. I see this warning, I guess it's because the IP Let's see. Yeah, I think it's because the dot forty five on reachable primary device with IP address dot one SVI one. Okay. Let's see. This is a LAN automation. I don't see any discovered device. So Let's check what we have here. This is the fabricator. Let's check the DHCP short IP DHCP binding. We have 78.2. And something important here is that I should have ISIS between the fabricator five and the border control plane one. So let's see. Okay, so we have short run section ISIS. Okay, let's go on into VLAN 1. I don't have any ISIS, at least not yet. So I can see here Fabric H5 is 60%. It looks, for now, it looks good. I just want to check the ISIS portion because if the ISIS is not out, I won't be able to ping that specific loopback address. Let me see first the session logs. Okay, star network session primary. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to move anything, at least for now. Okay, I have the IP, as you can see here, I have the IP, I have the default route. Let's wait a little bit. Okay, it looks like now it's pushing some configuration here. Because you need to wait until you can see the IP address here, okay, that 49. So even if I put in my Excel sheet to use the 45, it seems that it will use the next available IP address based on the records that Catalyst Center has about LAN automation because this was not the IP that I was trying to use. As I showed you before, it was dot 45. Okay, so I have this ISIS is up. So let me just double check the ISIS here. Okay, this is good because if I have ISIS, this device the new Fabric H5 will have a default route and Catalyst Center will be able to reach that specific loopback. Okay, let me let me see what is going on here. I have a discovery device, it's 80%. Okay, seems like it's moving. So let me ping this specific IP from the Fusion. 
I might be able to ping this one. Okay, it's reachable. Yeah, let's wait for this to be completed because something that I mentioned is the first time that I was trying to run this, I stopped the process here in this 80%. And the process got stuck and I couldn't do anything. And later I tried to, I don't know, move to another virtual interface and all that, but I couldn't really delete or discover or rerun the LAN automation on that switch. And I guess it's because Catalyst Center keep a record of that device and that series of numbers. So you cannot really run again LAN automation. So let's wait for this to be completed. Okay, so let's wait. Let's see if we can check the logs here. Okay, I don't really, okay, this is, okay. Here you can see the reserve IP address is that 49, it won't use the one that I was trying to use, which was that 45 because it was not part of the allocation of the range that I should use. And now it's working in this provision device and the serial number. So we need to wait for this to be completed. And let's see what happens. Now, something that I would like to check is about my previous configuration related to overlay multicast because I enabled multicast also on the corporate VRF and the configuration is still here. So that's good. Let's see what is going on here provision device okay so let's see this now as you can see here i have the host name And what else? The thing about the loopback, the ISIS, the multicast configuration, right? But I'm still using the VLAN one for this for reachability. So this should move to layer three configuration. Move this way a little bit more here. Okay, as you can see here, after a couple of minutes, it should move to provision, right? And then you can stop the line animation. Otherwise it will remain in the same way. And then you apply and it will start the configuration about layer three. So it will remove the plan one or the configuration that you have currently in this plan one and it will start the layer three configuration. Okay, so after a couple of minutes, you can see here that the layer three configuration was pushed to those uplinks, right? If I check the fabric edge file, you can see that now I have my <clears throat> ISIS up between the border control plane one and the border control plane two. Yep, that's it for this video. Hopefully this can help you somehow. And thanks for watching.